Hi everyone. Okay, let's get started. So this is going to be uh, Unit 1, Notes 3, third video. And this one we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to use Desmos, and you're welcome to follow along on your own Desmos app on your phone. Desmos, D-E-S-M-O-S. -S. Here we go. Should we start? So we're going to consider this function. This is a graph. Remember graphs? It looks a lot different than y equals mx plus b. And what does this say? A. Consider this function h. Okay, A. Set each factor equal to zero to find the zeros of the function. You ready? So in the front here, that is a factor. Negative x is being multiplied. So anything being multiplied is a factor. So we're going to set negative x equal to zero and then solve for x. Do you see how that just says negative x? So if we divide by negative one, zero divided by anything is zero. So we have one zero is zero. Okay. The next factor is x plus two. So we set x plus 2 equal to 0, and what would that get us for x? x would equal negative 2. And then the third factor is, oh, look at that, there's two of them. So we have x minus 2 equals 0, and then we have another one, x minus 2 equals 0, x equals 2. Don't worry that I left the parentheses off, it's okay. Okay, and I'll make sure. So that's called the... Anytime you set each factor equal to zero, that's called the zero product property, ZPP. Yeah, you know me. There's a song. Um, I should have had an intro song. Maybe I'll do an outro. Here we go. Multiply h of x out to have it in polynomial standard form. That's what we started with. That was notes one, where we multiplied this all out. This is going to be long, you guys. You ready? Did I do this all right? Yeah, four, okay. The first thing, remember when I said foil first? We're going to foil this back first. So that is not x squared minus 4. No, no, never, never. That is x minus 2 times x minus 2. And so we need to, do you know what we could do? Let's do this. Let's distribute this negative x inside to this first group. Okay, so negative x times x is going to be negative x squared, and then negative x times 2 is minus 2x. All right, and now we're going to FOIL this. So first, outer, inner, last. This is going to... I'm wondering why we're doing this. Oh, yeah, we're... well, one is good practice, yeah. Okay, do you see all I did there was combine like terms in the middle? Okay, now we have a 2 by 3 that we need to multiply out. So I'm going to do negative x squared times x squared, negative x squared times negative 4, negative x squared times positive 4, and now I'm going to multiply negative 2x by everything. Negative 2x times x squared negative 2x times negative 4, negative 2x times positive 4, and I'm wondering, I'm wondering, did I make any mistakes? That's what I'm wondering. If you see a mistake, way to go. I'm not sure. So in math, sometimes we make mistakes and we're not sure about it, but there's ways to check it. So C says, so we multiplied it out. I, I'm pretty sure I got it right, but I'm recording a video and sometimes I get nervous. Graph both versions in Desmos to see if you multiplied correctly. Oh my goodness, it's a self-checking worksheet. Okay, I'm going to do this. I have the first one already in. I cheated. I need to make sure you all can see it. Okay, now I'm going to type in the second one. Ready? Uh, I'm not going to call it h of x because that might it might not like that. Negative x to the 4 plus 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus 8x. <gasps> Do you see that? Do you see how it matched up? Let's see. Can I move it a little bit? There we go. Isn't that cool? Look, that was the original here. This is the original given to us on the paper, and then this is what I multiplied out in blue. Dude, where's my blue? There we go. See that? So that means we did it right. 
look, if I had like forgotten this negative in front, look, it wouldn't have been the same graph. Okay, or if I had said this was a five instead of a six, it wouldn't have been the same graph. So just by graphing it, we saw that we got it right. Okay, yay, happy face. What do you notice about the zeros from part A, dot, 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 and the graph? Okay, so we have zero, negative two, and two, but we had two twice. Let's look at the graph again. Are we okay? Zero, negative two, and two. What do you guys notice? What do you see here? Zero, okay, negative two, and then two appeared twice. What's the difference here with this graph crossing and this graph is a little bounce, yeah? Okay, so the, the zeros from part A are what on the graph? Are the x-intercepts. It's where it crosses the x-axis. Intercepts? Is that how you spell it? Sweet. Uh, what do you notice about the coefficient of h? Okay, coefficient, that means the number in front, number in front, and the direction of the arrows. Uh, I don't know. Well, okay, what's the coefficient? What's in the front? Negative. Okay, so the coefficient, I wish there is a shortcut to write coefficient, but there just isn't. Coefficient is negative one. And what do you notice about the ends of the graph? If you're watching my video, let's see, I'm zooming out. Where are these, these are the arrows down at the bottom. Where are they pointing? What direction? They're both pointing down, okay? And the coefficient is negative one. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Arrows are pointing down. All right, we're moving on, okay? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish this. We'll see. Example two, consider this function factor first. Oh, we have to factor it ourselves? That's okay. Common factor of x, because there's an x in everything, so we're gonna factor an x out, and then this can be factored again. Uh, what multiplies to get negative six, but adds to get one. Um, is that right? Yeah, I think so. Set each factor equal to zero to find the zeros of the function. So each factor, x equals zero, x plus three equals zero. So what would x equal? x would equal negative three. This first factor was x, so it was just by itself. And then x minus two equals zero, so x equals two. Okay, what did we say here? What did we say? The zeros are what on the graph? The zeros are gonna be the x-intercepts. This says graph both version and Desmos to see if you factored correctly and then sketch the graph. Well, I'm pretty sure you guys, what do you think? You think these zeros are going to go here and here and here? Yeah, but what's the graph going to look like? Okay, I have both versions in Desmos. How do I know we factored correctly? Look, they give me the same graph, okay? And our zeros are at negative three zero and two and we're supposed to graph it okay those are i don't know we'll do our best okay negative 1.7 up to oh it doesn't we don't even go up to eight on the on the paper who made this paper oh yeah i did uh if you don't reach the points that's okay watch i'll show you on the paper what i did look at that see how my max didn't fit but the min the min kind of does Okay, we did this, we did B. What do you notice about the zeros from A in the graph? What are the zeros? So the zeros are the x-intercepts. This is your big idea. Are you understanding like what the point is? When you factor and solve, those become what on the graph? They become the x-intercepts. Zeros are the x-intercepts. What do you notice about the coefficient of F? Okay, what's the coefficient? The coefficient was equal to, what number is in front of the x cubed? A positive one. Up here was a negative one and they were pointing down. But a positive one, huh, well one's down and one's up. One's down and one's up. We could say that this is an increasing. When something starts down and goes up, it's called increasing. These were both pointing down. And we'll talk more about that next. Okay, like in the next lesson. All right, example three, pictured below if you're going, that's it? Yes, that's it. Okay. 
Pictured below is a graph of a polynomial function, ga. Identify the zeros of ga. Okay, hold on. What were zeros? Zeros are going to be what? The x-intercepts. Okay, so we see them here. That's x always. Here, here, and here. Now what numbers are those? So x will equal negative 2, x will equal negative 1, and x will equal 2. Use the known zeros to write the equation for g in factored form. Okay, you guys, this is fun. We're going backwards. Ready? We're going backwards. Here are the three zeros here. These zeros came from these factors. These factors. And then when you multiply out the factors, you're going to get this. This standard form, factored form, zeros, zeros, factored form, standard form. Do you see how we're going in the other direction? Okay, you ready? Here we go. This zero of negative two would give us a factor of what? Did you see the pattern? X plus three was a negative three. X minus two was a positive two. So what will negative two give us? X equals negative two will give us a factor of X plus two. Okay. Uh, G. X minus one will give us a factor of what? X plus one. And x equals 2 will give us a factor of x minus 2. What do you think we're going to do next? Rewrite the factored equation in standard form. Awesome. Foil first. I like to foil the back first. Is that strange? Don't judge me. I like to leave the first one alone and foil the back. And then I'm going to combine like terms in the back. Can you guys see? No. Come on, can you... Um, is that correct? We'll see. We'll always be able to check. x times x squared is x cubed. Ooh, you like that? x times negative x. x times negative 2. Okay. 2 times x squared. 2 times negative x. 2 times negative 2. And then we just need to combine like terms. And I feel like I'm not going to have room. I have 1x squared. If I make it tall and skinny. Negative x squared plus 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is plus 1x squared. Negative 2x. And then negative 2 and negative 4 make negative 6. Do you remember how do I know if I did that right? What could we do? We could graph it in Desmos. We could graph this and this in Desmos. And it should match this, right? I'll see if I have time. Rewrite the factored equation in standard form. Got it. What is the constant term in standard form? And does it connect to the graph? <laughs> I think I made a mistake, you guys. So this is funny. We're going to learn our lesson. Okay. What is the constant term? Well, let, how about this? I think I did make a mistake. So let's check our work. What's happened every other time I thought I made a mistake? I hadn't right? So this is it, you guys. No editing. You get the keener. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause to type this in to save time. Okay, you can see my, my graphs don't match up. So we got to figure this out. Are you with me? Will you, will you stay with me while we figure this out? First thing I'm going to double check that I wrote the factors right. Negative 2, negative 1, and positive 2. Okay, I got this. I've, I've foiled something wrong here. x squared minus 2x plus 1x, 1 times negative 2. Okay, I'm okay there. I added this correctly here. Okay, now this. x times x squared, x times negative x, x times... <gasps> dun, 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 dun. Right here. x times negative 2 is not negative 2. It's negative 2 x's. Uh, double check the rest is correct. I think it is. Okay, so the ter the x term is wrong, and then the number on the end is wrong. 